So this is Linux Mint 17, Kiana, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And this is the Mate desktop. We're going to be having a look at both the Mate desktop and the Cinnamon desktop in this release of Linux Mint. And this release of Linux Mint really marks a kind of a new era for the Linux Mint team and for the Linux Mint distribution as an operating system. Now in the past Linux Mint has been based off every single release of Ubuntu that comes out that rolls around every six months and then obviously every couple of releases you have a long-term support release which is what we are on now with Ubuntu 14.04. Well Linux Mint 17 is based off Ubuntu 14.04 and it's actually planning to be based on the long-term support release of Ubuntu for the next foreseeable period of time at least until 2016. So, Linux Mint 17 is going to be supported by the Mint team until 2019. It's also going to be the base for all the future versions of Linux Mint until 2016. So this was a decision made by the Linux Mint team in order to chase a more stable desktop, a more predictable base, and be able to focus on the features that they want to improve in their desktop rather than chasing their own tail, trying to provide a stable release for each release of Ubuntu that rolls around. Now that they have a stable base, they're happy with it, now they're just going to keep improving it for the next couple of years. Now for me, I think this is a great move, and I'm going to talk about that a little more in the future, but right now let's just knuckle down into what is new with Linux Mint 17, and why you should be using it, especially if you're coming from a Windows XP background, or Windows in general. One of the things that you're going to be greeted by is the welcome screen. Now Linux Mint has had a welcome screen for quite some time, but they've refreshed the look of it and added a few more options to it, making it, again, much more user friendly. We've got links to show you what new features are in the distribution, important information, a PDF user guide, and also restoring your backed up data, installing any additional drivers that you'll need to do, and also launching the software manager to install additional packages. You also have links to help like tutorials, the chat room, the forums, and then you also have options to donate if you want to. Now the Mate desktop or the Mate desktop, I'm gonna to refer to it as the Mate desktop even though I know technically speaking it's the Mate desktop. But there's way too much argument over that and I think it's beside the point. This desktop is based off the original GNOME 2 desktop that Linux Mint used to provide. Now, it was one of my favorite distributions back in the day where it did look like this by default. And the fact that they now provide this as a distribution that people can use that looks exactly the same as a Linux Mint distribution from back, you know, three, four years ago, I think is fantastic. This Mint menu in particular holds a special place in my heart as one of the best Linux menus to ever arise out of the bowels of development. Just because it's so functional and the filtered search and the powerful search menu here. The ability to install packages straight from the menu, the ability to search the internet and searching and launching all of your applications while keeping a keyboard driven interface. I reckon this menu is just genius. Now obviously with the Mate release they aren't chasing features as much as they are stability. They're wanting to provide a stable desktop that looks and works exactly the same as what it has for years. It's an effective goal and they really achieve it time and time again with their, with their releases. And quite honestly, in my opinion, uh, Linux Mint takes the crown for the most user-friendly desktop. It, it just does. All of the tweaks that they put into this distribution are to make the desktop make more sense in the average user's mind. And they have a dedicated community and development team around achieving that goal. So all of the tools that they provide, all of the tweaks that they make are all to make this distribution user-friendly. So what are some of the new things that they have worked on in the last release cycle? Well, the driver manager is new. It's been around for the last couple of releases, but they're putting a bit more work into it now where you can actually install drivers even if you're not connected to the internet. So if you have a laptop that doesn't have Wi-Fi, for example, and you need to be able to install the Wi-Fi drivers for your card in order to get online. Well, the good news is that now with this driver manager, you can, you can simply insert the USB stick that you installed Linux Mint with or the installation DVD and it will get the drivers from that CD or DVD if it needs to, which is a fantastic addition. They've also improved the language settings now so you can change the language of the system very globally and so it will change everything to do with the system. And this tool will look the same no matter whether you're on the XFCE desktop, the Mate desktop or the Cinnamon desktop. Software sources also underwent a bit of work as well. 
So after you give it a root password, you can jump in here and change the both the software sources for the Linux Mint repositories and for the Ubuntu repositories as well. You can also enable backported repositories and also unstable testing repositories for anything that the Linux Mint team is working on with a single click. Now there's also been a boatload of bug fixes with the Mate desktop and with the Linux Mint distribution as a whole. So a lot of the niggles that you may have had with Linux Mint in the past have probably been fixed, especially with the release of Mate or Mate 1.8. And a lot of these indicator applets are just sheer gold. So if you miss the days of having indicator applets on your panel and having your panel look however you please, then this is the distribution for you, just saying. And also the login window, which is the Mint Display Manager, has also undergone a little bit of work to make it look nicer and also to make it function better with high pixel density displays. They also have included a new batch of wallpapers and they've also done a bit of work on the theme as well so that Linux Mint continues to look nice and fresh. And I've got to say, some of these wallpapers are really quite impressive, especially to come out of a community-based operating system. So the main components of Linux Mint 17 at the Mate desktop is Mate 1.8, the Mint Display Manager 1.6, the Linux kernel 3.13 and also the Ubuntu 14.04 package base that I discussed earlier. So now let's hop over to the Cinnamon side of the coin and we'll see what's okay. going on there. Now while the Cinnamon edition holds the same desktop structure as the Mate edition or the classic version, it does look a little bit different, a little more modern and it's obviously a little bit more themable and slightly more KDE-ish in, in the way that it works. But the essentials remain the same. You still have a panel, you still have quick launch settings, you still have applets, widgets that you can add to both the panel and the desktop, and you still have a menu that is both categorized and has a filtered search. It's not quite as powerful as the Mate, it's not quite as powerful as the Mint menu on the Mate edition, but it's still not a bad substitute. Now resources wise, Linux Mint is still relatively light on when it comes to res system resources. You can see here that after opening and closing a few apps, I've got 460 of the two gig of RAM used, and it certainly doesn't seem to be sluggish by any stretch of the imagination. Our boot time, I will say, is remarkably quick, but the boot time on Ubuntu 14.04 is also very fast. Your mileage is going to vary, but overall I've found Linux meant to be a lot lighter than Ubuntu's Unity interface, and also it's just a tad lighter than KDE with a lot of the settings stripped back. So being based on more modern technologies, the Cinnamon desktop of Linux Mint 17, uh, it, it undergoes more innovation on the whole than what the Mate or Mate desktop does, mainly because it's based on some more recent libraries and widgets, but also because it is the next step for what the Linux Mint team want to do. Ever since GNOME 3 came out, they have forked it and turned it into their own thing, and now Cinnamon is up to release 2.2 in Linux Mint 17, which means that it, they've rolled in more and more features and improvements as the release cycle goes on. Now one thing that they've been working towards is integrating everything into the Cinnamon desktop to make it stand alone, independent of all things to do with the original GNOME desktop. So now of course, for a few releases we've had all of the settings under one system settings panel, where you can have control over nearly everything to do with your system from appearance, to software preferences, to hardware, to, and to administration. Now all of these different settings categories all look pretty similar and they all work how you would expect them to. Obviously it's worth mentioning that the theming abilities in Cinnamon set it apart from many other desktops nowadays, at least the ease of theming and how encouraged you are to customize your desktop to the way that you like it. Just by the sheer amount of settings in here, you can see that Cinnamon is a desktop that's supposed to be morphed into what you want it to be, not you having to morph your workflow into something that another third party company wants you to, <coughs> canonical. So a lot of the settings dialogues in these settings might have originated from the original GNOME desktop, but they've since been morphed to suit the Cinnamon desktop and what Linux Mint is trying to achieve. And that is a lot of customization and very scalable. One new feature that they have added with Cinnamon 2.2 is for high pixel density displays. So as you can see, it's scaled up the desktop considerably so that it looks at home on very high resolution laptops. They've also adjusted how the hot corners behave so that you can select the ones that you want to use, but it's not too intrusive or intimidating by default. They have settings for pretty much everything under the sun here, and then for hardware settings, it's most of the standard GNOME stuff, even though it is technically independent of GNOME. 
It's also worth mentioning the improvements that have happened to the update manager. No longer, no longer do you have to input your root password to launch the update manager and no longer will it automatically refresh the update manager every time you launch it. This is, this is one of the biggest gripes that I had with the Mint update manager in the past. So now I can definitely say that this is hands down the best update manager that there is under the Linux desktop. As you can see here, we've got levels of upgrading as to how safe these packages are and how well tested they are. They also have indicators as to what sort of updated, what sort of updates they are, whether they are just general package updates or whether they're security updates. Thus, it'll help you to prioritize the ones that you should be installing over, over other ones. As you can see here, if you order them by what type of updates they are, then you get a general idea as to how important those updates are. Apart from that, they always give you a description and of course all the version numbers there so that you can compare the two. They also have an updated log now so that you can have a look at what history of updates you have installed, not just with the update manager, but also with apt-get and synaptic. So while they are targeting the new user, they do provide a lot of useful tools and information to the power user so that those who have been in the Linux world for a long time will not be feeling left out. This is the strength of a community-driven distribution, and the development that goes into the Linux Mint distribution is only going to get better as time goes on, as they are now shifting their focus from providing a stable release every six months out of every Ubuntu base that rolls around, to just focusing on the long-term support release. Ultimately, I feel like Linux Mint 17 is the ultimate distribution for a new user at this point, hands down. It's the most stable, it's the most customizable, it's the most familiar as far as user interface is concerned. Their steady development towards providing an independent and different Linux desktop continues as it's not just the Mint tools now that you get with a Linux Mint desktop and it's not just the codecs and it's not just a great set of apps out of the box. It's customization, it's power to the user and it's independent software base all point to Linux Mint as being not just another Linux distribution, but one of the major players in my opinion when it comes to making a user-friendly Linux desktop. That's really all there is to say about this distribution. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below or on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. You'll find links in the description. Thank you all for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis. And I will see you all again in the very near future. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen, and go enjoy some Linux mintiness.